this is sort of, this is the world that we're, this is the world of what drones used to be. And I've kind of done an order of magnitude um, calculus here. Drones used to be tens of millions of dollars, and they're global hawks. Then they went to millions of dollars with things like predators. Then they went to hundreds of thousands of dollars with things like the Scan Eagle from in situ. Then the tens of thousands of dollars with the Ravens. And that's what the military industrial complex sees as, as, as UAVs. It's basically manned aircraft minus the man. And that's what the top-down approach does. And our, and our sense is, OK, let's keep going. You know, right now we have sort of drones that cost under $1,000. And there's, you know, to give you an order, an order of magnitude thing, we basically, it's about 30,000 of our, of our APM autopilots out there. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's one, either the first or second most popular autopilots in the world. We sell about, about 1,000 autopilots per month. So, and that, and we'll, we'll do about 20,000 per year. So we'll put 20,000 drones in the air in 2013. Just to give you an order of magnitude comparison, the entire US military fleet of drones is 7,500. So basically, every quarter, you know, by, you know, by, by mid-year, we'll be putting more drones in the air every quarter than the entire US military fleet. How is this possible? Ours are not better than theirs. The, the reason is that ours are cheaper and easier and, and, and more personal. So that's what, a, that's what a drone that costs a few hundred dollars, and ours are targeted around $500. But let's keep going. What about drones that, that cost tens of dollars? You know, today this is 170 bucks. Soon it'll be 90 bucks. Then it'll be like 40 bucks. And now drones will cost like $99. And maybe you'll buy them at Walmart. And OK, let's, let's keep going. Oops, sorry, I went too far. What about, what about, you know, remember this technology is being driven by Apple and Google economies of scale. What about when this thing turns into a single chip? Now this chip is in your RC receiver. It's in, your, it's in, it's in, the, it's in the toys you get. That fundamentally, this technology, that, that's what we know. This technology is getting faster, cheaper, better at a rate we've never seen before. What happens when autonomy, true artificial, you know, artificial intelligence driven sensors, GPS, et cetera, what if this is just something that's in every device out here? And all that geofencing is every one of these aircraft has the ability to geofence. They have the ability to come home. They have the ability to data log. They have the ability to be autonomous if you want to be autonomous. How does this hobby change when an autopilot is basically a $10 add-on to the existing RC you already have? That's what we know is the technology is going to enable it. We know that that's possible. We know it's likely. What we don't know is how this changes this room, your, you, your life, and then fundamentally the aircraft that, we're going to, that our children are going to see in the air every day. So this is sort of what happens when you do the bottoms up approach to compete with the top down approach. Lockheed Martin and Boeing, as much as I love them, are not going to get you to the $10 drone. The web model of open innovation will. And that's, I think, what's ultimately going to, going to change the aerospace industry. So I just want to end on this note. There's the IBM PC from 1983. How did that happen? Did that happen by scaling down an IBM mainframe? Did that happen from taking this and making it smaller, better, cheaper? Or did it happen by taking this and putting it in a box and making it more professional? You know the answer. This is the Apple II. Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, Homebrew Computing Club. This is where we started. We started making things that were uglier than that, and worse, and a lot worse than that. And right now, we're moving to the IBM PC level, and pretty soon we'll be in the iPhone level. And we've seen this picture before. We see what happens when bottoms-up innovation competes with top-down innovation. The PC changed the world more than the mainframe did. The internet changed the world once it got in the hands of regular people. And I think the future of aviation is to be applying open innovation, the web's model, and basically regular people doing extraordinary things to put autopilots, autonomy, and robotics in the hands of everybody to find new applications that we can only dream of. Today it's a hobby. Tomorrow it's going to be an entire industry. And I think it's going to happen with this model becoming smarter rather than the aerospace industry becoming cheaper. I um, wrote a book about this, about the maker movement, which is what this is part of. Um, the industrialization of the maker movement. As I say, I think, this is the, I think this is an industrial revolution. I think this is probably the driver, not just, not just autopilots, but basically the democratization of manufacturing, 
taking the web's innovation model to physical things. I think this is going to drive the American economy in the next century. And um, I'm voting with my feet. Um, this is my next, this is my career. This is what I'm betting my, my future on. And this is why I'm here today. Thank you very much.